Hey, everybody. Hi, guys. Well, from Salt Lake City, Utah. It's Thank God I'm Atheist. The podcast. I'm Frank. And I'm Dan. Coming up on today's episode... Stuff. We've got stuff. Yeah, we'll be just <laughs> talking about stuff. I don't know. Well, we're going to be talking about some... Uh, a, 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 a crazy former Utah state legislator. Yeah. And we don't know that he's crazy. Oh, just maybe... Well, he's definitely got... A, a he's tale. unstable. A possibly cautionary tale. He seems unstable to me. Oh. But I wouldn't say that to his face. He's like, a oh, he's like a former power lifter, bodybuilder, dude. dude. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, scary. But he loves Jesus. He would never hurt a fly. <laughs> <laughs> He'd hurt a fly for Jesus. I bet he would. If he even if he even suspected that Jesus wanted him to hurt that fly, Ooh. that fly would be in Bam! trouble. Flatten that fly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> anywho, um, oh goodness. Uh, happy uh, All Saints Day, everybody! Mm, that's well, true. That it's 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 or for us it is. By the time you listen to this, listener, it might be All Souls Day. It might be whatever day. <laughs> it might be. It might be All Tuesday. It might be Thanksgiving. <laughs> it might Thanksgivinga. be. It might be Thanksgivinga. Have you heard of Thanksgivinga? No, it's not one of my, one of my things. But uh, Hanukkah and Thanksgiving are converging. For the oh. first time since like the late 1800s. Oh. Um, and uh, it's not happening again for a very long time. So Jews in the United States yeah. are going to be celebrating Thanksgiving. They'll, they'll be stuffing their turkeys with dreidels. That, exactly. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. That'll, that'll be fun <laughs> for them. <laughs> yes, indeed. Yams and latkes. <laughs> uh, so I got a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh there's a uh, there's there's a movement there's a bill before mm-hmm. the uh the Pennsylvania state uh house uh of representatives. Oh, really? Um representative Rick Sacconi. Okay. Frankly, can I just Rick say okay. if your if your representative's name is Rick or Sacconi, I'm just saying there's a lot of there's a lot of Ricks out there. I think it's a warning sign. If, uh, if, uh, if, of a potential you you could have some trouble there. <laughs> Problematic but this uh, this shouldn't be problematic, right? He just wants he's just putting sponsoring a bill titled the National Motto Display Act. The National Motto Display Act. So the national what is the national motto? Problematic. <laughs> the it, national motto is problematic. Is it is it the one that's on the money? In God we trust. Uh, okay. Guess where he wants it displayed? More places than on our money? Every school in Pennsylvania. Oh, dear God. <laughs> dear God. It's the same, it seems to me to be the same tactic that, they're, that they were using for, uh, in that other school district for the... Uh, for, for, for how to get prayer, right? Right, yeah. Or, or no, no, celebrating Christmas. Celebrating Christmas. Yeah. It's used well, something it's a that's holiday. a federal thing. Yeah. Well, surely no one can object to that. It's federal. <laughs> This isn't just some local thing. I, We're not I, just a bunch of hillbilly yokels. I'm just surprised that we need it on to be more ubiquitous than on our money. Oh, yeah. But, but you know but they I say guess, God is everywhere, and I, now they want to make it true. But I guess you know what? We are using cash a lot less these days. <laughs> yeah. Maybe he should be trying to get on God We Trust mandatory on all debit cards, on all credit cards, and yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, that would be that would kind of you know yeah follow suit that would be that would be the right thing to do yeah the right thing to do <laughs> clearly <laughs> so he wants it on all the schools yeah here's a here's a great uh quotation uh from the this is an this is him talking to the pittsburgh tribune review okay he says it's passive exposure they don't have to look at it because <laughs> if it's on the cafeteria wall or if it's over the front door, they can look at it or they don't have to look at it. Oh, God. Why would we not celebrate our national motto? We can have <laughs> witches on brooms in schools. We can have yeah. Dracula and vampires and zombies, but yeah. we can't have our national motto in our schools. He makes a good argument. He makes an excellent argument if you're not paying attention to what he's saying. I well, I just like that he he <laughs> is completely willing to compare our national mo- motto to witches on brooms and zombies. Right, exactly. It's the same thing. It's clearly in God we trust. Right. Exactly. So he's right. It is right there with witches and with with all the other fake yeah, things. Yeah, they're all fake. Except that he probably believes that wit- in witches. 
Because if Does he believes, he? if he believes in the Bible, and it says in mm. the Bible, thou can't, thou, you know, you can't suffer a witch to be to live. Yeah, and I learn, think, yet we're suffering them in our schools. I think he should and be, not our national. Motto. I think he I should be going, going from yeah. down the hallways yeah. of every school in October mm. and murdering the witches. Well, yeah, it says so in the Bible. At least tearing them down off the walls, <laughs> and then dunking them in water. Something like that. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. He's huh. uh, he's burning, very concerned. burning, burning all the the witch paraphernalia. Yeah. Do we even need to mention why that's not o- why it's not okay? To what have in God we trust emblazoned everywhere? Yeah, I guess we don't really because it's it's. I obvious think our to listeners us. probably <laughs> we're all, all hip. agree with us. We're on all that hip part. to the reasons why that's not okay, right? <laughs> Everybody, <Yeah. laughs> I don't have to talk about that. Oh, uh, let's we'll yeah, <laughs> whatever. Stupid Ricks. I don't trust anybody named Rick in politics. Yeah. Suck, 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 succubus? What was his last suck, name? Suck, suck it to me. I think, it, no, it's it's Saccone. 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 Rick. Rick Santorum. Suck, suck Oni. Rick Perry. Can you think of any good Ricks in politics? Rick. Rick. Rick know. Obama. Bar- Barack. Bar- Barack. <laughs> Barack's cousin. Yeah, exactly. No, I don't know. Anyway. There you go. Hopefully they can. Of course, I was just saying that. Well, anyways. Hopefully they can pass that. Again, <sighs> I, know, I, s- I say I say he's opening themselves up to the, the motto being changed. The lawsuit that changes the motto. <laughs> like, like this is what my you know. I kind of hope that all of these things go through, just because the lawsuit may have big unintended consequences. Just getting rid of a national motto. Why do we need a national motto? Do we well, really need? I mean, do we need a motto? Well, the national motto used to be "E pluribus unum," which is kind of cool and yeah. Latiny and like well, means of, means something that we care about that right. all Americans right. should care about. Out of many, one right? Yeah, but no. a little socialist. Is it, well, yeah. I mean, it's kind of like I think I think the same people who are working for In God We Trust are would love to get rid of E Pluribus Unum and yeah. just be like E Unum Unum. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Like they want they they just want the one. Yeah, out of all of the white people, one. <laughs> out of all of the grumpy old white people, <laughs> unification. And do not try. And the rest of you get out of here. To, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway, don't. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I, I'm going to continue with something fairly similar. Oh, down, down a very similar vein, actually. Uh, surprisingly enough, the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs, Colorado, known for well, Colorado Springs, is known as like a sort of a a hotbed of evangelicalism mm. in, in the United States, right? You know, sure. And we've heard of all sorts of stories of, with the um, Air Force Academy and like the the sort of the pushing of 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 Jesus and God and whatnot yeah. on the, on the cadets and what have you. Well, they will uh, the Air Force Academy cadets uh, in Colorado Springs will no longer be required to include the words "So help me God" when taking their annual honor oath. Yeah, interesting. You know, I saw this story, hmm. and but here's the thing: what what everybody was pushing for was. To just drop it, drop it universally, or make it an elect, and make it so that you can elect to say it if you want to. But the the default is just not to have it in there, right? Because, right? I mean, but I mean, this is so. Uh, that's the objection from grumpy people on our side, right? Is that it's still the default, and it shouldn't be. They're right. No, it it technically be. should not be the default. Because there say, will be a lot of coercion, a sense of coercion. And I read this article and I was like, ooh, wow, well, still a little sticky. Yeah. Still feels a little a little icky. Like, are you really going to be the one who doesn't? Right. Or who just, like, mouths it? Yeah, people are not, people are going to notice. Know, or who crosses their finger <laughs> right. back while saying it. So help me dog. <laughs> Did you just say dog? <laughs> hmm? What? <laughs> No, I said. But so, nonetheless, I think it's a good step in the right direction. So help me, Gord. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, to uh, no longer have to uh, be forced to say it. To say it because it's just because part of the honor code. It's just so amazing. By the way, have honor you ever seen oath. a picture of the chapel 
on the at, at the U.S. Air Force Academy. I don't know that I have actually. It's gorgeous. Really? Actually, it's really kind of an astounding. Is it like all building, modern and sleek. Kind of. That's what I my my of... recollection of it is that it looked somewhat like a metal like temple of solitude. Ooh. I'm not sure that that's an accurate that's a, recollection. Uh, you might want to Superman Google that. reference. Yeah, exactly. For the uninitiated. Yeah. All of those crystals growing up yeah. out of the ground. And yeah. So cool. Yeah. Anyway, I, I it's a cool building. Is it shiny? It's shiny. Is there a lot of glass? You know, I'm not remembering too well. Wow. You, you well, you're Google the one who brought it. it up, Dan. I'm just saying I remember it looked cool. <laughs> don't You don't have to be a jerk about it. <laughs> Hang on. I'm going to Google it. Uh, but anyways, uh, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I guess ever the optimist. <laughs> like I see a story like this and I'm like, oh, well, good, good. Yeah. And I read it and I go, oh, well, it's not as far as it should be. But like, I still feel like, hey, you know, this is, this is, this place, this, this Colorado Springs, Colorado makes Provo look liberal. Uh, yeah. It's, pretty, you know, like. It's pretty wild. Hey, hey now. I'm showing him the uh Hey now the chapel. That it's, does look that's worthy of the Air Force. It's pretty fucking cool. Yeah. That's worthy of a lot of things, actually. Yeah. Wow. I would I I wonder, hey, you know, we should find some atheist uh Air Force Academy mm-hmm. attendees mm. and see if they can start a, an air for, like a, a a meeting of their own in that chapel because theoretically that chapel's non denominational. It's meant to serve all of the cadets, right? Mm. Right. Even though it's clearly a Christian edifice. Oh yeah, obviously. But I mean, I that'd be kind of fun. Yeah. Just see if we can. Just see if we could go to one because I'd love to go to that thing. Yeah. Just see it. Anyway, I mean, is the public allowed into that? <laughs> I don't. I don't know either. Well, it's all very Maybe confusing. we can be guest speakers. Hmm. I'll lead a I'll lead a session. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Well you go do that, Dan. Okay. I'm just throwing it out it's there. It's a pretty building. If any of you guys are attending there. So help me no one. So help me me. <laughs> so I help, believe in me. So help me my fellow man. I'm pretty sure that my word uh is about me, not about God. Okay, fine. Yeah. Well, cool. Well, you really took took the wind out of the sails on that one, Dan. What? You are you because you wanted to celebrate? I well, well I was a little. Ce- uh, I wanted at least like a moment of like, oh, what? Oh, well, sorry. Hmm. I did. I I I am offended by that. It's still the default. I well, I yeah. find I find that icky. All right. There you go. Okay, I've disappointed Frank, everybody. <laughs> well, this will lift your spirits, my friend. I don't know. You 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 just you just pushed them down pretty far. So let's You're, see. You ready? Mm. World's sexiest, scratch that, hottest rabbi. Ooh, really? Uh huh. Interesting. Jurotica, which what? is the year old online hub for Jewish sexual expression. Uh oh. Uh, is is accepting nominations for? <laughs> well, hot they don't, they don't have any yet. Well, no, I mean you like, don't have pictures to show me oh, of some hot rabbis. Not really. I'll be the judge. Well, go go to Jurotica. Jurot. I don't even. What? How do you spell Jurotica? Jew. Jew. And then Rotica. Okay, that's. I guess that's fairly simple. Yeah. Um, and you can go and and you can you can do I get a vote? N- nominate. Oh, I don't know. Maybe you can vote. I want, oh. But they're like nominating their uh, their hot rabbis. Originally, I, it was... I like that their tagline is "Get Jewish, <laughs> sexy." <laughs> I, th- I think that's how most people think of Jew- Judaism, right? Yeah. Sexy. I think so. Um, so yeah, they got the uh, they they're uh, they're they're they want everybody to nominate their rabbi for mm-hmm. hot rabbi. Oh, okay. So uh, we're looking for studs and babes. <laughs> Who possess three qualities. A, the smarts. B, some action. And C, <laughs> badass factor. <laughs> badass mm. factor equals your rabbi rides a motorcycle, mm-hmm. plays jazz, leads silent meditations and retreats. Okay, wait. That third one, not so badass. Or maybe your rabbi is so irresistibly sexy that you haven't missed a Shabbat service in this year. <laughs> Yet this year. Yeah, that's the one we want. Ooh, you're creating a Shabbat in my pants. 
<laughs> Shalom to that. Uh oh. <laughs> of course, the there is a post that clarifies that this was never a contest based on physical appearance. He says when the guy I... says about the contest title being world's hottest rabbi. Are you kidding me? <laughs> It was originally going to be sexiest rabbi, but then apparently people were complaining about, like, you don't want sexy in the synagogue or whatever, so they changed it to hottest rabbi. So that really, yeah. I mean, that makes it so much better. Yeah. I mean, why not, right? Yeah. He says, he's, he he did mm. add that uh, there will there will not be a sexy rabbis of Jurotica swimsuit calendar. Well, that's the only reason I would be here. Boo. Yeah. All right. Do the calendar. I reject. Pussies. I reject. Come on, you wimps. Get on get on the calendar. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Not so into it. Too bad. Yeah, that is too bad. Too bad. It's it's funny because uh yeah, there are plenty of, of sexy Jews, but you just don't think of like religious leaders as sexy in general. Yeah, I mean Unless you've the, got the, like a beard fetish. And it just doesn't seem, it doesn't strike yeah, me or, as being like a or, yeah. thing. Broad-brimmed hats really turn you on. Kind of a, you know, a vestment fetish as right. well. Right, yeah, you indeed. Know, like weird robes and sure shawls and whatnot. I find a direct line to God really sexy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, pray, Rabbi, pray. Recite something in Hebrew. <laughs> Mm, that's nice yep. um well here's i i've got somebody who is uh one sexy dude oh who uh had a bit of a he had a he had a temper oh dear this this gentleman oh dear and i'm talking about martin luther martin luther that guy was a nut he is a little nutty you, you know? remember when he tacked that thing onto the church door i i mean think about doing that you know That's the, kind of a crazy you know thing that to go today's do. the anniversary of that. Is it really? I think he did it on All Saints Day. Oh, no way. Didn't he? I'm bringing this up on on, on the anniversary of something important. Yeah. Yeah. So Mark, Martin Luther, um, reformer, right? Yeah. Um, what are some other good words? Uh, intellectual. Yeah. Um, um, so forth and so on, right? Right. Like the, we, we have this, I think, generally... We we have this very positive, very fairly positive image of of Martin Luther, someone someone who, who is devout, stood someone... up for what he believed, right? You know, uh, faced. I mean, he faced down the. I mean, he stood up against the Pope. the the power of yeah. his day. Yeah, he stood up against the power structure of his time. He was a German and, monk and uh, and denounced it. Right, and uh, he and spoke of course, truth to power. Yeah, I mean, there's yeah, he don't oh, absolutely. Um, well, he was also to do that. I think takes a certain kind of personality, uh -huh. and it's something that we don't really think about too often. And uh, well, I am on uh, a website. Um, it's uh, the URL for this is ergofabulous. dot org <laughs> slash Luther, <laughs> and it is the uh, Martin Luther insult machine. Um, what? So. Um, it's all quotes from things that he wrote. And it says, so this one is, even if your writings were from an angel from heaven, I would take this horrible document and ever after having used it as toilet paper, wipe its nose. <laughs> <laughs> insult me again, Martin Luther. So you click on insult me again. Uh, you are the ultimate scourges of the world. The Antichrist together with your sophists and bishops. Oh my. Yeah. He's Ooh. grumpy. <laughs> yeah. You are admirable, fine, pious, or pious. You are fine, admirable, pious sows and asses. <laughs> you are the true chief and final antichrist. Wow. Yeah. Was you talking guy. to the Pope on that one? Um, I don't, it, it has citations. Uh, it says where you can go find it. I think, I think so. Right. In general, like, or, you know, ministers of of the pope mm. uh you teach the disorderly masses to break into this field in disorder like pigs oh oh dear and they, they just keep going on you are jugglers of imaginary sins <laughs> we're gonna post this uh this site 
onto the uh, onto the Facebook page so that you can look up your own insults. By the way, fooey on you, you servant of idols. <laughs> oh well, I fooey. never. What? Don't fooey me. Fooey you. <laughs> oh, it was a uh, he, he. It was a uh, on Halloween that he posted his ninety five <laughs> theses. <laughs> Snot nose is what this one says. Uh, well, there but you go. Simply snot nose. Uh, according, uh, it, it, it seems that uh, he posted. By the way, the name of the church that he posted to was the was All Saints Church. So oh, maybe that's what I was getting. Confused. Wow, look at you! But there you go. Wow. In Wittenberg, Germany. Ach ja. Which is uh, which is also interestingly where Hamlet was studying with Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. No way. Mm. Hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. Probably not. <laughs> well, that that uh, that Martin Luther. You are the sin master and soul murderer. No, I am the gatekeeper. Are you the key master? Oh my goodness! This one's a that? paragraph. I do. I just rewatched that the other day. I did too. I love that That's movie. Fun Ghostbusters, people. You see, you need to go see that again. It was. It's. It held. It holds up. There is no Zool. There is no Dana. Only Zool. <laughs> there is no Dana. Oh come on, get him right. <laughs> If you're gonna do, <laughs> oh Zuli, you nut! <laughs> All right, well, so go check that out. We'll post it on the Facebook page. Go and and you can use it to insult your uh, your religious friends. He didn't like sows. <laughs> he he used that. He used frequently. that one a lot. Yeah, yeah. And he also used a lot of bodily functions. There's a lot of like fart and snot ones. Yeah, it's it's kind of crazy. <laughs> he he yeah he was pretty sure some of his 95 theses were just like. Not enough fart and snot in the in the liturgy. <laughs> no, 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 no. He it's not. He didn't like those things. They were insulting. I, I know. I'm. I'm saying he was like, willing to pull them out and say you're a fart ass. Uh, yeah, exa- he was willing to say you're a fart ass. I think. I think that that was. I think he was replacing fire and brimstone with fart and snot. <laughs> a little less terrifying. <laughs> I don't know. Some of those farts can be pretty nasty. You are the devil's donkey. Damn. Well, that is true, actually. You are a toad eater and a fawner. <laughs> All right, you're having too much fun. I know, now. I love it. I'm, looking... get, I'm gonna give you one more. Okay, okay. Let me. I'm looking. Oh, okay. Then I'm gonna take the one that's like three paragraphs long. Oh, good lord! <laughs> no, I won't do that. One. Uh, no, no, I don't like that one. That one's boring. Um, blind moles. <laughs> Blind moles. There, there you have it, folks. Straight from Martin Luther's mouth. <laughs> or pen. Or pen. Yes. You you people are all blind moles. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna educate some blind moles now. What do you want? So uh so you know, you and I used to be Mormons mm. of the of the Mormon LDS faith. Right. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. Not to be confused with any of the other sects of Mormonism slash Latter Day Saint movement, sure, yeah, of no, which there are no, too many. Of course, yeah. <clears throat> but uh, so one of the things that Mormons do, and we've talked about this plenty, is that there's a there there is a semi annual general conference mm-hmm. happens twice a year. Yes, uh, and at that, uh, you know, the big. Very important men give boring talks. Very important men. Very <laughs> and the, boring. And, and and anything that happens over the pulpit of that of that conference is taken to be new scripture, more or less as good as scripture. Yeah. Uh, words to words to live by, and not to question, and definitely not. No, no, no. You don't go around questioning. No, no, no not at all. It's from it's from God's anointed. Mm-hmm. Their their direct mouths. Absolutely, God's hand may as well be straight up their ass, moving those mouths for them. Like puppets. I believe that's how it works. Right. Yeah. Jesus puts mm-hmm. his holy hand up there. <laughs> they're, they're all just like, "Dear God, please help me with the." <laughs> <laughs> there it is. It's yeah. I am now talking straight am, God talk. I am uh, the mouthpiece, <laughs> and he and, uh, is controlling me mm, through my butt, through my butthole. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> uh, so I just wanted to make people aware of one of the things that happens. One of the things that happens with these uh, talks that these guys give is uh-huh. that they are then published. Yes, in uh, in 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 Mormon literature. 
and uh, it goes out in the monthly publication, The Enzyme. The Enzyme is there. Or The Ensign. Or The Ensign, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Depending on how awfully you want to pronounce it. <laughs> Depending on how Utah you are. Right, exactly. Uh, <laughs> so... Uh, so it just get you know usually gets published sort of directly straight across. But what's mm. fascinating is when things are changed between right. the talk that was given and the publication, because obviously the publication is sort of the, the final word on the matter. Well, yeah, and supposedly there the every speaker is given the opportunity to review the transcript, right, and to make sure that like maybe they deviated from what, what was up on the teleprompter at the time right, or, or whatever and or whatever blah 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 obviously what they have in front of them was on was what was on the teleprompter right and, and now they're and you also get a sense when you follow this little transition from from speaking to publication that there may be moments where the other brethren go um maybe you need to change that right maybe what you said doesn't need to go down in posterity. Right. So uh, I'm just going to provide one example of that. Uh, at this last October one, a couple weeks ago, mm -hmm. uh, an apostle named D. Todd Christofferson, because it can't just be Todd. No. That's Todd. not douchey sounding enough. Right. You gotta add a, <laughs> you've got to add an initial somewhere. Right. I always wondered when I was a little kid, because I have two middle initials, what they would do if I was an apostle. Both. Daniel H. M. Beecher. Well, no, you'd be D. H. Madsen Beecher. <laughs> I would go by Madsen from then on. No, I'm not going to go by Madsen. <laughs> but that's what they do. They love the first initial. Yeah. They love the first initial. They would even move stuff around for you, probably. <laughs> oh, you want to stick with Daniel? We got to get an initial at the beginning. <laughs> You're, maybe my name is, is, is uh, H. Daniel M. Beecher. That would be really douchey. That would be as douchey as you could get. Anyway, <laughs> D. Todd Christofferson. I'm going to call him D. Okay. D. Uh, has removed. The, so he, he was, is the young one, right? He's pretty young. Well, his name's Todd. How many old Todds do you know? Yeah, not that many. Anyway, he uh, he gave a talk about. Um, it's so funny because this last conference was all about either. It's we're now strict that it's not okay to be gay or right. women shut up and get back in the kitchen. Yeah. This that was the theme of this last conference. Yeah, that's true. Uh in in part because those are the things that people are yelling at them most about. So he basically he gave the one of the shut up and get back in the kitchen speeches. Oh yeah. Uh and he edited out the phrase he removed the words feminist thinkers from oh, his recent conference this. talk. Yeah, okay. So uh, so it used to say... Uh, what did it say? Some... So now... So it said, Some feminist thinkers view homemaking with outright contempt, arguing it demeans women and that relentless demands of, of raising children are a form of exploitation. Right. Now it just says, Some view homemaking with outright <gasps> contempt. Yeah. But here's interesting. what's interesting. Here, That's an interesting here is edit. what's interesting about that is that maybe he caught on to the fact that feminists embrace homemaking if that's what you want. Exactly. Yeah. Feminists are not anti homemaking unless you don't choose it. You think that's what he caught on to? No, I think. I, I but I <laughs> I think the PR I, department I, was like. Uh, right. I love that. I love this anti-feminist thing. They've managed to demonize the word feminist so effectively. Yeah. Gosh. Yeah. Feminazis. Yeah. Exactly. Thanks, yeah. Rush. Yep. Yeah. It really is a bad thing to be, you know, for women to be pro f women. Well, yeah. I mean, nobody minds, you know, helping women out. <laughs> Making sure that they are the, the, happy and, and that satisfied in their station. That they're supported in mm -hmm. their in their homely duties. That they, that they have appropriate allowances. Right. That you they, know, that they you can know. take care of the home and children. That they have, you know, clothes on their back and shoes on their... Well, they don't need shoes. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, sun, Sunday they do. Yeah, exactly. On Sunday. And when, they, when they're doing the grocery shopping, because clearly the... the the grocery stores will not let you in without shoes. <laughs> right, right, right. You know? So they need some shoes. They need shoes. Right. And pregnancy. 
it's yeah. helpful. Yeah, so. it's good. It's good, yeah. Dan. Oh, these Mormons. <laughs> They're really holding on to a set of 1950s values that, they, that like, yeah. were difficult for people to attain in the 50s. Yeah, it wasn't. It was the 50s have now become this sort of this sort of panacea, this 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 utopia mm. in people's minds, yeah. and it's not. If you happen to <laughs> live in the right suburb, right, you know, then yeah. You, sure. you that was the you 50s had a, were great for you you had awesome. a chain link fence and you had you know the tv on in the in yeah. the parlor and and you a perfect hostess mother and a yeah and an upstanding father company man mm-hmm. of course and that was everybody in this country <laughs> Everybody was white. Everybody was class, white, middle and class, and prosperous, and happy, and happy. Every Clearly. single, every single body, everybody was. Yeah. So let's go back to that. We need because to. that was clearly, clearly, it would work sort out of the pinnacle of American civilization. Right. It would work out well for me. I'm a I'm 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 a white man. Yeah, but you're not Christian. And I'm straight. Oh shit! You know, damn it. That's part of it. You're yeah. not. You're not. You're not. Not waspy. No, I'm not. Damn it! I thought I was there. <laughs> well, I guess there's no. I guess Levittown's nowhere in my future. Oh shoot! Damn. I was really hoping for that. That nice little matchbox of my no. own. Oh, so nice. Oh well. It's a, it's a lovely, lovely existence. It's anyway. just too bad that it's a complete fabrication. <laughs> yeah. That it was. I mean, it was something that was marketed to the American people through shows like Leave It to Beaver and. Ozzy and Harriet, right, and, right, and you know. and who wouldn't want to live those incredibly boring lives? I don't know. Wally and the Beeve, they oh, they had some hijinks. Good, you know, <laughs> when Eddie Haskell would come around. Oh, that boy was no good. <laughs> that boy was, was no good. He clearly was no good. Oh, I don't approve. A little two face bastard. <laughs> that fucker probably was a bastard. He probably was, yeah. and gay. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I got one last thing. Um, apparently, uh, and this is fascinating, actually, um, there has been something of a tourist boom in Rome since the uh, the uh, uh, invest the the the, the I'm sorry the uh, appointment of Pope Francis. Oh, Latin Americans are converging upon the Eternal City in huge numbers. Huh. They, well, you know, he's yeah. from South America. They're excited about having a Latin American Pope. Sure. And all of a sudden, um, tourism is up nearly 7%. That's big. This year. Uh-huh. Especially, like, in Rome. Like, they get plenty of tourism. Oh yeah, I mean They're, that's a major stop on everybody's European trip. There's no no Rome's never been starving for tourists. No, and never will. Right. And so to see that it's up seven percent is uh, remarkable. Up nearly twenty percent from of uh, visitors from Latin America. Twenty yeah. percent increase. That's huge. Yeah. Anyways, that's just crazy. Yeah. So Pope Francis, he's having a, a positive benefit on the Rome economy. It's one of the. I mean, obviously. <laughs> Um, it's one of the things that drives Rome's economy. Right. Well, they better, all I can say is as an American, I need to warn the Italians. What? What's that? If they let all of these Latin Americans in, mm. next thing they know, they'll be like picking their crops and taking their health care. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be taking. You really think so? Oh yeah. The, it, they'll have this, this huge they'll have to build a wall yeah i know on the on the border with mexico yeah it'll be awful oh, the border of mexico <laughs> and and italy yeah i don't know they're talking about mexicans specifically it's latin america that's what that means broad mexican <laughs> latinos mm-hmm. it's synonymous I'm, look i live i live in the united states okay i know i know my latinos <laughs> they're just moochers coming oh up, no sneaking across the borders to italy <laughs> no, Italy has an immigration issue. Yeah, that's it's true. with Africa though. Yeah. They that's you, you actually see a lot of um um when 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 Italians get all up in arms about immigration, that's who they're getting upset about. Most of Europe actually. Yeah. 
Yeah. Me- that, you know, uh, mm. Africa is Europe's Mexico uh-huh. when it comes right down to it. Yeah. I have a friend yeah. who actually just got her Italian it citizenship. Wall. She just, she literally, if you're, if like you, if you can trace your lineage back to an, an Italian, like in like four or five generations or something, they'll let you yeah. in. Really? Yeah. You have to live there for a while though, right? Mm-mm. Well, here's the thing. She she lived in London. Oh. Got kicked out. Okay. Got One kicked of, out of London? Well, got, yeah, because she, her visa expired. She, she was oh. on a student visa. Okay. Got kicked out because because England's clamping down. They don't want oh, anybody to come in. I see what she did. Clever. So she went and got her Italian citizenship, which took way longer than it should because Italian bureaucracy is like, you know, swimming in molasses. Right. And finally... She gets her Italian citizenship, doesn't go anywhere near Italy, goes no. straight back to London yeah. because it's the EU. And right, exactly. She can so live she anywhere in the, the, in right the European Union. Yep. Wow, that's fantastic. I would do that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's smart. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. She gamed the system. She totally gamed it. Fuck you, England. I'm coming back. Yeah. And fuck you, Italy. <laughs> and I'm fuck just you, using, Italy. I'm just using you. <laughs> right, exactly. You're just, you're just a vehicle. Huh. And now she works for the prince. Wow. Well, she did before, too. The Prince. Prince Charles. Really? Oh, the yeah. Prince? The Prince. The, 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 and she the... sees the boys all the time. Shut up. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. She had Prince Harry throwing ice at her one time. What? Yeah. That's weird. The stories that she's not supposed to tell. <laughs> I'll tell you what. They're, they're interesting. Really? Mm-hmm. Huh. I want to hear some. Obviously she, not right now. She wanted to get a picture of herself when she was leaving... And she didn't think she was going to get to go back. Uh-huh. She she was going to try to get a picture of herself planking across Harry and William's parking uh, spaces. Like there's two <laughs> signs that say "parking for Prince Harry, parking for Prince William." Right, right, right. I don't know if she ever did it, but she was threatening. She was threatening. You shouldn't tell such stories in such a public forum. You might get her in trouble. That's well. I'm saying I'm not saying she did it. I'm saying she wanted to. <laughs> she just wanted to. <laughs> Uh, that sounds harmless, yeah. nonetheless. Yeah, yeah. She's like one of those uh, downstairs ladies from the uh, from from Downton Abbey. Really? Only at the prince's house. They like they're probably the only people left in the world who enjoy that sort of Edwardian standard <laughs> uh-huh. of living, aren't they? Indeed, because there's no other members of like the upper classes that could even come close to their to, to affording it. Right. To the upstairs downstairs thing. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's wow. Or why would you I mean, want still, to? The Queen has footmen, for example. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, Which... the, the U.S. president has someone always available to cook for him, and you know, a whole a whole house yeah. full of servants or whatever. But different. It is different. It's totally different. Like yeah. it, that's steeped in some sort of class system. Well, it's, and it's that... not. It's not like Obama's aunt has somebody who's also right got servants and right, right. You know, all those things. Yeah. Anyway. So, but anywho, uh, well, facebook.com slash TGI Atheist is a great way to follow the conversation. It is. Or you can, week. you can email us at podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or you could leave us a voicemail at 424-666-8442. We yep. might just play your voice on our show. We maybe will. You, yeah. never, you never know. Yeah. We make no promises. Yeah. Well, I want to play some audio now for our break. Hooray. Uh, this is uh, Cindy Jacobs. Ooh. Recent discovery for us. I didn't really know who Cindy was until not too long ago. But we're, we're, per- we're apparently we're, we're on a mission to make her famous. Well, yeah. Well, she's a prophet. Make her famous She's some kind of evangelical-ish prophet. Mm-hmm. Yep. She's a Christian prophet. She is. Modern, latter-day prophet. A latter-day prophet. And here's a fa- uh, just a sweet story that she tells it's wonderful one day he came in from playing he was six and he felt miserable and rather than just saying something was naturally wrong with him i said daniel do you have a concern we need to pray about he said yes mom he said could a president be killed and at that time, it was, you know, it, there was a, pre, there, there, you know, of course it was possible. I said, yes, that's called assassination. And we prayed and we said, God, would you avert an assassination attempt on our president? And as he prayed and we prayed together, all of a sudden, I said, how do you feel now? He said, I feel light. I'm happy. And the six-year-old went out the door and became just a six-year-old. But a moment before, 
God had called my child in intercessory prayer. Later on, we found out behind the scenes that there had been an assassination attempt on the president. It wasn't widely publicized. Uh, he saved so him. He totally. He saved clearly him. Clearly dead. That they, kid's amazing. That kid was called by God to call on God. Wait, wait. Wait. <laughs> God, it seems like you could skip a step here. Yeah. It seems like you it's don't very... need to have a six-year-old kid <sighs> pray to you in order for you to attempt, to to halt an assassination attempt. You know, it seems like you could just do that. God works in mysterious ways. Yes. Because what if he had, like, reached out to the kid? I mean, God doesn't... He doesn't... <laughs> He doesn't get involved in our politics, right? He does if he needs to save somebody's life. Well, what I'm saying is maybe he's not really aware of who this president is. But he needs he needs somebody on earth to say, you know what? Hey, I don't want the man killed. Hey, God, we, we appreciate this guy somewhat. Because what if the six-year-old had been like, you know what? The guy's kind of a douche. I'm not going to pray for him. God then God is like, oh, Nobody really cares about this guy. Right. Especially not this six-year-old. How, how, how would God know if a six-year-old didn't pray to him? <laughs> That's so important. It and is. Clearly. Wow. I just... Hmm. Yeah, well, That's a powerful go. story. Cindy Jacobs, she's got a very interesting faith, mm -hmm. that woman. Yes. It's inspiring if you don't pay any attention at all. <laughs> To anything she's saying right <laughs> yeah. otherwise it's just crazy uh, yeah. well we did get a whole bunch of emails yeah we're, we're getting to the point people where uh where we can't read them all so sorry about that if you write to us know that we do read them right but we don't we can't read them all on the show yeah we can't have them all on the show yeah um andreas wrote from cedar city utah he he wanted to correct me on something i said that if you leave the church you get a 10 percent raise if you leave the oh the, the math yeah, yeah he wanted I, to correct me on the math yeah, yeah. he's right if you don't get a 10 percent raise you get an 11.11111 percent raise because uh -huh. because the math works backwards that way right exactly you're paying 10% of a gross income, and then you... Anyway, yeah. Right. Thanks, Snarky. Um, <laughs> Susie wrote in. She wanted to, to say that... Um, I mean, she was... We, we had commented that we didn't know what kind of songs... What kind of Christmas songs you'd have in Australia. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because in Australia, you know, we because we all of our Christmas it's songs here on the Northern Hemisphere yeah. are, are all about snow. Yeah. She basically confirmed that there's nothing. She 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 posted a video. She sent us a video of a of a a comedy song. Okay, but it's not. But they got they got nothing. Do they do like? I mean, surely Father Christmas is not in like, you know, jackets and hats too. Oh no, he wears he, he wears See, a, a a tank top and a. <laughs> I don't I don't know. He's going surfing. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for that, Susie. Uh, Mark wrote in. He said he was commenting on a thing we we talked about. Uh, those guys in in Iran who mm. who took who were arrested for using sacramental wine. Mm. You remember that? Yeah. Uh, and he said that when he was a kid, uh, his parish priest was recovering alcoholics, so he did use grape juice for communion. <laughs> oh, so much for transubstantiation. Mm. I guess. He said maybe he couldn't handle having wine stored in the church in close proximity. Yeah, because clearly the limits to transubstantiation <laughs> is it's, that it it's got to be alcohol. Be yeah, otherwise I couldn't. I clearly, could not happen with grape juice. Right, exactly. Grape juice. I mean, wine. Yes, turns into the blood. You know, blood of Christ. Right. Clearly, grape I think juice, it's just. No. I think it's just that everybody thinks it's more boring if it's not wine. Well, clearly, it's more fun. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Anyway, That's right. uh, Webb wrote in and and said um, that uh, he, he was listening to our discussion on billboards uh, uh, because yes. of the whole atheist billboard thing and whatever. Uh -huh. And as he was listening to that segment, he was driving on <laughs> on the I five near uh, towards Los Angeles uh -huh. in, in in Anaheim. By the way, we were, Frank and I were just talking about that sketch from SNL called The Californians. <laughs> so it's so funny that you, you mentioned you had to mention exactly where you were, but you were because it's the it's where the sign is. Anyway, right. he, he saw a sign from Answers in Genesis that said, "To all our atheist friends, thank God you're wrong." 
Oh, which is basically, I mean, I would, I, I would criticize that, except that all of our side's billboards are equally <laughs> shitty. So <laughs> what the fuck ever, it's right, our fault. Right, fine. <laughs> anyway, um, Cameron wrote in uh, and said uh, that he, um, he, he, he had a whole thing to say. You know, he he left the LDS Church uh, after he was denied a mission for health reasons. Oh, okay. Um. But now his brothers are starting to go on missions, and he's, he's concerned about it. And he, anyway, oh, uh, yeah. he was, he that I I feel for you, Cameron. The thing that I wanted to pull out of his thing was was actually that he said he recently learned that you can be denied a mission call solely on the grounds of having HIV, and huh. that the handbook of instructions requires anyone who has had homosexual relations to get an HIV test and meet family services before applying there for a mission. Shut up. I didn't know that. That is a totally a new one for me. Yeah, that it must be new. If that's true, it must be very new. But holy crap, wow. why the hell are they being such jerks about it? Right, because the kids who come in and, I mean... It's not like they're making out with each other. Well, it's not like they're supposed to be making out with each other and having <laughs> sex with each other. Well, I, I'm kind of hung up on the whole, if you've had homosexual sex, then you have to go get an HIV test. Because right? your risk, I mean, yeah, okay... It's marginally higher. It, it is higher, but at the same time, they should be using that exact same standard for anybody who's had sex. If you've had sex, maybe you're not, at risk. Maybe not lesbians. They're, maybe, the, they're yeah. at the lowest risk. Sure. So you have some young sister lesbian. <laughs> right. You know. Who just experimented on her freshman year at college or whatever. But are they going to be that no correct on this? No. They're clearly no. not taking reality into account with this thing. Uh, That's really man, shitty. Man. Yeah. That's really shitty. I have a friend who was sent home from his mission. This is interesting. Was sent out on his mission, having confessed his homosexual encounters Mm -hmm. to his bishop before his mission call. Right. So theoretically, it was all taken care of, right? Right. Then he's out on his mission in like Oregon or something. He's And he goes to his mission president, who's basically, you know, an ecclesiastical leader for missionaries. Right. And he says... Uh, you know, I'm still, I, 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 th- I, I think he just confessed to struggling a little bit still with his homosexuality. Okay. They sent him home. Boom. Wow. And he hadn't like had sex with his companion. He'd done or... nothing that was wrong or whatever. He actually got an, a, a letter of apology from the church for that. Really? Later. Wow. Yeah. But it, 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 it made bags. everybody mad. Yeah, no kidding. Anyway, uh, we have some... Oh, you have an email, right? That I you do. Wanted? Or it's um, actually, it was actually a, a comment on the blog, wasn't it? Uh, Just say yes. Yes. <laughs> anyway, what, oh, what, what was a comment on the blog? I didn't... Yes, I didn't realize that. Yeah, I know. I just told you that. Um, but it, it's written in the form of an email. Right, exactly. So what I'm looking at here looks like an email. Right. Okay. So what does it say? So it says, hey, Frank and Dan... As though we are one and some sort of monster. Frank and Dan. Frank and Dan. I am Frank and Dan. (laughs) Uh, So it says, uh, so the long-awaited film adaptation of Ender's Game premieres on Friday. As I'm sure we all know, Orson Scott Card is a rather eccentric man, to say the least, with his respect to his social, or with respect to his social slash political slash religious views. Personally, I find myself not wanting to see the film for this reason. However, I've heard so many great things about Ender's Game, and I love science fiction, so I'm conflicted. I don't mind sticking to my principles, but I don't want to be an obstinate, angry atheist. What are your thoughts, and will you go see the movie? Thanks. Love you guys. David. Tricky. This is tricky, and I've already worked through my issues on okay, it. Okay, so Frank... So that's fr- why I'm the one who, like... We're, we're, we'll let Frank be the uh, the TGIA uh, official expert on gay okay. uh, nerd issues. Okay, so... Go gay nerd. So, Ender's Game, fantastic book. Right. Loved it. Good. Lo- still love it. I haven't reread it in years, but, like, when I first read it, I was just completely enthralled and fascinated by it, I ended up reading the remainder of the series mm. of of the the Enders series. Mm. Um, and uh, spoiler alert: apparently, Ender makes it out alive. <laughs> well, <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, but anyways, the um, 
But you know that the author, <sighs> the author, or Mr. Scott Card Mr. is a Card Mormon, is a Mormon, and, and he's become dick. pretty vocal about the gays. He doesn't like the gays. He doesn't like the gays. Yeah. And it's kind of a dumb thing for anybody to do who writes books and right. wants people to read them. Um, and to now, is, become and too now political. there's movies coming out. Yeah, exactly. Why would you do that? So the um, I do know that the producers of the film have um, have, have have really distanced themselves from him. Like that means anything. But they're I mean they're they're really trying to you know we're not making a film that has his political views in it. Right, you we're know, making a film of a story. Of a story. This is the thing. I love that book and that story so much. At a certain point, like not seeing the film, what is that going to do for me or for, for gay rights or against or... Orson Scott Card? Right, right. Like I, like he's just. I've a, already that a book, dude that, with some stupid points what, of view. What am I going to do? Excise the memories of the story from my mind so right. that I no longer have anything to do with Mister. Scott and, Card. And the truth is we can't just boycott everything that's involved with a, with a person who has views that, that diverge from our own. Exactly. You know, like, if the, so he says awful things about the gay community. Right. I'm fine. I'm, yeah. Okay. Thanks, Orson Scott Card. Right. If you write good books, that's fine. If you write books now, that are anti-gay. It, now, here's the deal. I'm not going to. I probably, I would have a weird thing probably about reading a new book by him hmm. i will say that right like i have an attachment to ender's game like right. I, I i i've i've been waiting for a film ad adapt, film adaptation of this book to come along for years because right. it's been rumored that there was going to be one for years they've been trying to make it for decades i mean it's been stuck yeah. in development for a very 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 long time and um and different people get attached to it and then different people get attached to it and then it ends up you know not getting made right and not getting made and not getting made. And so I've just been waiting for a very, very long time. I don't think that it does anything to go see it or not see it. Right. It doesn't hurt anybody. I don't anybody. think you're accomplishing anything. You're so just... Ultimately, it's a great piece of entertainment. So your stance on not... Or hopefully it will be. <laughs> the, the fact that you don't want to read another book by by card is... Would you, would you say that's a... I mean, to me, that sounds like an emotional stance rather than a political stance. Exactly. Rather, I mean, you're not calling for a boycott of card. No. But it'd just be hard for you. I, I would just knowing the guys, knowing that yeah. the guy is such a dick about right about gays to I, to read it. Yeah, I mean, I would go back and reread Ender's Game. I may sure. still, you know, um, but I already have an attachment and a familiarity with it, and I know there's nothing there's nothing in it that I. I mean, the, the thing about Orson Scott Card is that there was always this weird sort of. Uh, th- not god god a message but you you know it kind of it kind of always it wasn't like it was christian fiction or anything but right. there was a thread through it where there was like a there was faith well, running there's through going it. to be that i mean the fact of the matter is that the mm-hmm. mythos of gods comes is is as core to humanity as mm-hmm. you can get like the yeah. mythos is is there it's yeah. it starts with you know as far back as we have writing yeah and pervades everything but it doesn't have to be but it can be allegorical mm-hmm. it can be it can actually you know pertain to everybody you don't have to believe in a god even right. if it's a story about gods right you can and still get isn't. something from this it. isn't that right and this is and to be honest i read it years ago way before i like solidified a lot of my ideas in about sure god Sure. And my atheism and blah blah blah. Maybe you and shouldn't so, reread it. Maybe you'll see things that you. Maybe didn't I see. will see things. I don't know. I don't remember. I don't remember it being like preachy, gaudy. But I definitely, for whatever reason, I might be wrong about this because uh, there's nothing in the storylines that like harkens to any kind of god right. that I can remember. So I don't know. I don't remember how sciencey fictiony it is and how it's definitely not Jesusy or anything like that. Like it's. But I seem to recall there being it's something. It's in space for crying out loud. Yeah, but you know, if you want to, if you want to try hard enough, you could do. You could have Jesus in space. <laughs> I want to try very hard to have Jesus in space. Well, what about that? Would be amazing. Yeah, that'd be a great story. Jesus in space. You have you have the astronauts on the space station, and Jesus returns. And Jesus, what re- happens? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus parts the sea of tranquility. Yeah. On the moon, get it? Yeah. Oh, I went to parting the sea. I don't know. 
you know what? The the astronomical nerds will love yeah. it. Um, I say go see the movie. If you want to see the movie, if it's a, it, it's you say it's a genre that you like, David, go see it. Honestly, if we knew yeah. the political leanings of most of our favorite writers and stuff, we might hate everything. Exactly. Just it, for, don't take worry the about piece it. of work for its merit. That's you right. know, if 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 the book or the movie uh, speaks to you. And uh, and you walk away with 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 something that you feel is is a is a is a gain. It's a positive for you. Right. Then I say engage with it. Right. You know, because the fact of the matter is, the movie itself is not going to be, you know, weird about the gays. No. Nor is the book. No. That I can recall. It's probably just not going to come up. Yeah. So. So you're fine. That's his personal views. All right. We got one voicemail. Uh, we do, yes. To listen to. Um, and I will play it now. Hey, Frank and Dan, this is Tom in Denver, and I wanted to call about your show that dealt with the religious symbols uh, that are planned to be uh, outlawed in Quebec. And I just wanted to underline that I think this is an awesome idea, and I don't see any problem with it at all. You can't wear a ballerina's outfit to your job at McDonald's. Um, I can't wear cutoffs to my job. All jobs have a requirement of how you look and how you behave. And city workers in a, in a society that is supposed to be uh, religious neutral should not be walking billboards for their faith. So I think that wearing a costume, wearing a certain uh, headdress or, or, or uh, advocating your religious outfit is really reasonable to be uh, outlawed and we really ought to have more laws like that. Um, your show is awesome and I think you guys have a non bitchy attitude towards so many things that atheists really ought to be uh, better at. You guys are, are the, the the way that it ought to be done. Love the show. Bye bye. Well, thank you. Uh, thanks, Tom. Tom, yeah. is that what? I think so. I think so. That's um, what he said. Yeah. Okay. So the here's... transcript on Google is <laughs> crappy. Yeah. Um, but so here's here's here's. I'm just going to clarify what my point of view is. Mm. I, I I'm fine with you thinking that tom but my point of view is this uh on in terms of like people you know people wearing whatever Mm -hmm. if it if it is a thing that's just an advertisement for your religion yeah such as a cross around your neck no one no christians required by their religion to wear that cross that is just it is just them sort of advertising that they are christian right and showing it off to everybody right there I can go with you. I can go mm. with you down the road that if it is just an advertisement, mm-hmm. uh, that could be banned. If it is a requirement of your religion, yeah. I feel differently. Right. I a feel, Sikh turban. Right. A Sikh turban. Uh, a hijab. A, a hijab. A, you know, a, We're not saying like covering your face. We're saying a simple headscarf for right. a Muslim woman. Right. Yeah. And, and you know, I... I I think they're silly and stupid and they might, you know, whatever. Obviously, I'm not pro dress codes from religions, but I'm not, you know, if these people need to, you know, if these people are adhering to a a religion Mm -hmm. and this is part of their faith and it's a requirement of their faith, then I don't think they should be put in the position of having to choose between the requirements of their faith and a job. Right. And that's where I, that's where I differ from you. You're right that if it's just an advertisement, fuck it. You don't get it. Right. But if it's a requirement of your faith. Well, and I don't think that we should be pushing people out of specific jobs. You know, they, so they have this requirement that they need to have their head covered. Right. right. As part of part of their religion. Why would you push them out of out of a mainstream job? Right. Right. And, and in a place where they're going to be engaging with the public. It's on a certain level, they'll help be the their presence there will help demystify this this headscarf, which is really nothing, really. It's, I mean, yeah. I've known Muslim women before, and it's nothing. I mean, I mean, it is something. It clearly, looks, it looks different. And it so looks it, different. It feels and that's it. It feels weird, right? But and so that's not good enough. Engaging that's not with, a good enough with, reason with women who are covered and realizing that it's it's ultimately like it should mean nothing about how you engage with that person. Right. It should not change the way that you, you engage with that person and to have them in a position where they are now, um, engaging with people who are different from them. I think it's ultimately a good thing for people to be mixing. Yeah. But if, but if their own simple dress requirements that are not like advertisements, requ- re- 
if we turn those things into limitations for engagement with with the general public then i think that it's a loss for society on a whole not only We're mixing that, less we start to push people away with these kind of rules right what, what we're doing is creating an us versus them yeah. problem yeah rather than because i mean isn't that the real foundation behind you know islamic terrorists mm -hmm. is that you they can be so easily convinced that they're in a war mm-hmm it's so easy to point to something like this and say, see, they don't even let, let us wear our headscarves right. in a public, you know, blah, blah, blah. It's so easy. We could take the wind out of that, those sails so easily by just saying, sure, you can do that. Yeah. Who cares? Right. And if it makes, like, you know, a few people uncomfortable, get the fuck over it. Yeah. No one's... It's when people are trying to push a religion on you right. that it becomes a problem. Not when people are just practicing their religion as they do. Yeah. It was one of the genius moves of the Roman Empire. Mm. They they let the local religion stand. Yeah, they didn't get all weird about religion and and to because it's something that people hold really. They I mean they, they hold look, it so close. It's so part of their identity. And you may not like that. I it bugs me. Right. Right. But if you can just acknowledge that by just living together and living openly and letting people practice their faith the way that they that they want to. Yeah. Um. Or in the way that they feel that they're required to, that ultimately I think it's a win for society. It gets them engaging with people who are different. They're going to hear different ideas, and ultimately, in the long term, I think that the the that you know the nons uh, win. In, yeah. In these scenarios, I mean, honestly, look at how well everything worked out for the Roman Empire. Shut up. <laughs> It was a thousand year empire. I know, I'm just kidding. You know. Um okay, so there you go. Thanks a lot everybody for writing in to us. We and and calling. We really appreciate hearing from you. Mhm. Mm Let's talk about uh a local boy. Lo oh, yes. Just a good old boy. This is a good old boy. Actually. Um, Never mean no harm. For whatever reason. I'm really having fun. <laughs> <laughs> the Dukes of Hazard theme song. All of a sudden, sorry. Uh, for whatever reason, the Tribune has been the Salt Lake Tribune has been following the story of a former Utah uh, member, a state representative, state representative in the state of Utah. So, um, uh, by the name of Carl Wimmer, uh, and he's somebody who kind of left politics in a uh, in it was a, a dramatic in a way. fiery crash. Yeah. Um, he, uh, he, like I said, he was a state legislator, and then he decided that he was going to run for uh, Congress. Mm -hmm. uh, there, was a, there was a new House seat that was formed. Federal Congress. United States Congress. There's only one Congress, and it's right. I'm the, just, the national. Yes. It's okay. the Congress. We have legislatures in states. I'm just clarifying. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, anyways, so he was running for Congress, and um, he... Uh, there was a new seat that it was formed in Utah, the District Four, and uh, and he was he was like I'm I'm the man for this. And seriously, like the media was like, oh, Carl Wimmer in District Four. This is he, he's he has it. It is his right. Um, and uh, and our Democratic member of Congress, uh, Jim Matheson, um, had been sort of his district had been reworked in such a way by the Republicans in the state that it was clear that he could no longer win in district two. So he jumped over to district four mm. and, uh, and was running there and people felt like it was like, it was this moment where they were like, Ooh, what is going to happen with Matheson? Well, there's a woman who was also running a, as a Republican, uh, and wanted to, to be the one, uh, to represent district four. And that woman's name was Mia Love. So representative of Utah. <laughs> She's an African-American woman uh, from... Which is the whole joke that I just made. Like, literally, what's funny is that I just made a joke that... She's not like snarkily saying she's not representative of Utah purely because she's black. I don't know. I mean, but she's not. I mean, what I'm saying is there's not a lot of black people <laughs> in Utah County. Salt Lake no. County. Salt Lake County, there's more, but there's the more. numbers are still... It's still tiny. Yeah. I mean, uh, but anyways, so... Uh, Carl Wimmer actually lost in a grand, spectacular fashion um, during the um, um, primary process. Right. So he didn't even get on the ballot. Against... She she out conservative him uh -huh. strongly, and she's so... like Tea Party crazy. Yeah. So 
And um, nonetheless, uh, afterwards, he had some embarrassing things happen um, where he thought he was going to be hired on as a the political director of the Nevada Republicans. Um, and uh, it turns out that uh, he had been misled entirely, that it was kind of a trick that had been played on him. <laughs> <laughs> and he had completely oh. hook, line, and sinker fell for it. He was basically in his car driving to Las Vegas. When he uh, realized that when it all came to light that it was not there, for real. There was no job offer. There was no job. Um so oh. and so he had all these like really bad things happen for him. But the thing that the Tribune has been following of late is the fact that he has left the Mormon church and is now an evangelical um pastor. <laughs> Indeed. And this is like This is what has happened. This is like crazy story for me like i it's just absolutely fascinating to see this guy who was he was an up and coming political like figure yeah like you yes i saw carl wimmer's name all the time in the Mm -hmm. paper like i don't know how high he would have gone you know office wise but he was a name he knew how to make the paper yeah he knew how to sort of get himself out there a little bit yeah Probably make an and incendiary comment or it two. It was always a little crazy sounding, but right. he, I mean, that's Utah politics. Yeah. The crazy's always... That's American politics right yeah, now. Yeah, well... Whoever says the craziest thing gets the most play. Yeah, but we had Chris Butters in this state. We did have Butters. <laughs> oh, that Butters. <laughs> so anyway, so... Um, what so this kind of leads us to this, to this point in the discussion where we go, well, why is this even relevant to talk about for the show? Um, and the thing that I brought up uh, earlier, other than it's a, a Mormon moving to evangelical Christianity, which is the weirdest sort of lateral move you can make. Yeah. And <laughs> someone who is sort of high profile enough that it makes the news. Right. Indeed. You know? Yeah. Um, but it's not like he came to his senses and is like, I don't believe in God anymore. Oh, oh no, 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 no. Oh, he, no. he converted to something, uh, equally crazy Mm. um and it made me think of uh as i was reading all all this like turmoil that was in his life and sort of the sequence of events it actually made me think of the um there was this little tiny white handbook um that we had as mormon missionaries back in the 90s that we were actually instructed to carry with us in our shirt pocket um along with our planner and um and the, in in this little booklet, there were there was all sorts of crap in this little tiny booklet. But one of the things that it had was this list of um, uh, it kind of described the perfect potential candidates for conversion mm. to the Mormon Church. Indeed. And toward the top of the list were things like um, somebody who's just experienced a, a loss, mm-hmm. um, someone who has. Um, you know, whose life is in a certain amount of turmoil, right? Indeed. Where there's been an upheaval and the, right. the chips are still falling, right? The weak and vulnerable is what we're talking about Basically, here. yeah. <laughs> and that that's like clearly listed <laughs> out. I mean, th- th- those are the best people to contact. It's ridiculous. And there, were, there was like a list of 25 uh, things uh, or, or kinds of people and they were listed in order of like best to worst. Right. And so it's like, and one of the worst things that you could be doing is just like going door to door. Right? Oh yeah. Just random people. That's like terrible. I mean, but you have to be, you have to do that some. Yeah. But, but what it's you, what I'd spent most of my time doing because it, it was, you never had to talk to people about right. the church. Right. Exactly. Everybody was like, no, thank you. And you're like, thank God. Okay. <laughs> next one. No, thank you. Yes. Another one. Awesome. Doesn't want to hear about it. And I just get to wander around this city for another year. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The, you know, you learn this. I learned about this a lot when my dad died. Because hmm. uh, what happens is that there are dicks who troll the obituaries and send you fucking letters that are basically like, hey, by the way, have you thought about Jehovah's Witness? Right. I know that you're in a period of bereavement. Right. Have you thought about it? Yeah. You but know it's what you true. Sh- you know what you should think about? Jesus, this is the time when people are the most vulnerable, and boy, they're do asking they take themselves advantage. huge questions about life and death and the meaning of everything. Right, and that actually sounds like a line from 
Life and death and the meaning of everything. Yeah, that's the uh, from what's the Hitchhiker's Guide right. to the Galaxy. What's the meaning of <laughs> life, death, and the universe? And the, I don't know. Anyways, um, we should start just sending out an envelope that says forty-two when people <laughs> die. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like it's it, it it's it's a tough time in in anybody's life, right? And you are looking, or you might be looking for answers. Yeah. You know, if if you're not settled in your own sort of belief system, and if the upheaval is enough to sort of re, I, it's a devastating moment. Uh-huh. You know, these moments like a, the, a death in the family or whatever. These or the are loss of a political career, right? Right. Well, no, indeed, <laughs> no. It really... Like when you have to question everything about your life yeah. now. It's a moment to sort of look inward, mm-hmm. and if you know the if the person who has your ear at that moment is uh is is Jesusy or is Mormony or is whatever, it's pretty easy to right change the things around. Yeah. So that led one Mister Carl Wimmer to uh, the decision to uh, to to move to Gunnison, Utah. <laughs> population uh just under 3300 um and where he is a police school resource officer oh yeah. so he's he's the police officer in a school mm-hmm. um and uh for whatever reason he decided to convert to evangelical christianity yes i i found his blog when i was looking <laughs> around which by the way yeah. Uh, oh, I guess he's not a pastor yet. He's about to be. He's he's studying. He's studying to be the to be a pastor at like Liberty University, right? Something like that. Seems Some like online. Probably thing. yeah. Probably a correspondence course in pastordom. <laughs> the best way. It's really how you. Become it's a really what you need. You do, you don't want all of that like actual face to face discussion and no. learning how to give a decent sermon and all no, that no, sort no, of no, stuff. No. That's not at all necessary. Right. Uh. He, by the way, his blog, uh, anamericandreamrevealed.com. <laughs> An American Dream Revealed? Yes, yes. His life is an American dream? And he's revealing it. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's so, it's very funny. I clicked, I found it, and I went to it, and, and he's got just... The the entire masthead is a is is a picture. It's it's all like a JPEG, but it's really poor quality JPEG. So you, there's writing underneath it underneath the picture of mountains <laughs> that you can't like it took me forever to s- look to see what it said because uh-huh. it's it's all garbledy yeah it's really what funny. does it say uh let's see if i can figure it out again it says uh something uh from the frenzied pace of politics to small town simplicity these are our adventures of life, liberty, and the pursuit of all things happy and or covered in chocolate. <laughs> that is so, so wait clever. A that is so fun. This is Carl Wimmers? This, this is the Wimmerses. Oh, the, it's both of them. Carl and Sherry share uh, this. Okay, so she, hopefully she came up with the all things covered in chocolate. Otherwise, he is a middle-aged woman. He is a middle-aged woman, I think. Huh. No, it's it's bad. <laughs> but to take the curse off it, they've got a thing that looks like a giant, like, elk antler. Oh. So. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. That's... It's very nice. Very well-designed <laughs> blog. Yes. These are designy people. Oh, yeah. Clearly. You and I are so snarky about design. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, dear. I'm sorry. I just can't respect uh, a blog. That, that looks like that. <laughs> I'm not going to trust anything that, that that guy doesn't have anything to say that I want to read. He's, if he didn't bother designing it just a little bit better than that. They're not webby. They don't know the web. I'm fine with people not knowing the web. That, that was That's ugly. beyond not knowing the web. Yeah. Anyway. That's, come on. Just sign up for a Squarespace, dude. <laughs> It'll look so good. Yeah. Well, there you go. It's uh. So yeah, this is this is the blog that I also found his his like Twitter feed, but it's all I was hoping to find something interesting, and it's all boring. Mm. I mean, a lot of like sports stuff, and him going back and forth with with some person 
uh, the, I mean, and the back and forth is snarky but stupid. Right. Anyway, the guy, I, I, I think he's he's not the point here. Is yeah. what I'm getting what's to. The, what's the takeaway? The takeaway here is, the, I mean, what we're talking about is exploitation of of tough times, mm. mm-hmm. and how even someone, you know, even a rising as star, sophisticated as, as Carl Wimmer. As, as someone who can be tricked into packing up and moving to a place where there is nothing waiting for him. I mean, I, I God, I sympathize, I sympathize with him, but I mean, if you can't tell a real job offer from a fake job offer, uh, what, that's how, a rough one. How do you, how do you not even do, how do you not even do enough due diligence to know that your job offer is fake? <laughs> I don't know. What that says to me is that everything to that point in his life had been basically handed to him. Just flukes. Just just things that just, it just happened. Yeah. It just, everything he had was just dumb, stupid luck. <laughs> oh, you're elected official. Lucky you. Good job. You know? Yeah. Um, he was somebody he had just the right nonsensical things to say at just the right time. And, and to the, le- get the leaders, some that, delegates that threw him, him in to the ring knew that he could be controlled yeah you know but i mean i mean i don't want to get into how politics work in the state of utah but it's not a democratic system at all people people get you know selected by the smallest numbers imaginable yeah do you want to know what his his twitter tag says like what how he's described himself oh yes please uh it's at carl wimmer Okay. So, uh, an all-around family man who co-founded the National Patrick Henry Caucus, state sovereignty oh, group. That's right. I rarely respond, but feel free to do so. To do so what? I guess respond for him. Contact him. I don't know. <laughs> it's a really well-worded sentence. I, don't I, didn't, I didn't actually read it. I don't it. want to make fun of this guy just on these terms. <laughs> like, just, <laughs> I, just, I just thought that was funny. I rarely respond, but feel free to do so. Hashtag GOP, hashtag TCOT, hashtag U- UTPOL. Yeah. Anyways. We probably should have done a little more research on this guy. <laughs> no, but the, but he's just... He's not the point. The lead into the idea. Yeah. Uh, I I think it's an interesting thing. I think maybe we need to, as a, as a community, need to start uh, exploiting the... The weekend. <sighs> Suffering from a loss? Jesus isn't the answer. <laughs> Call us. We'll tell you what is. Um, so, yeah, suffering from a loss? We have nothing for you. <laughs> but we have therapists. Wondering if grandma's in heaven? She's not. Nope. Want to talk to a therapist now? <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't work. It doesn't work. We it doesn't work. I mean, we got nothing. Atheists cannot prey on people in their most vulnerable time right it, the, the 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 thought process the mental process that gets somebody to accept that there is no god has i can't imagine it having anything to do with grief unless you're s- no i can't imagine it because what happens really? it because here's what happens you pray to god you know you you you've suffered a loss your life is in a shambles something has happened and you pray to god and i got news for you if your own mental slash emotional state isn't coming up with helpful things, you're not going to get a good response from God well, considering you made him up. Right. So basically there comes, a, I think a lot of people do turn to atheism on their own hmm. after they've suffered a loss because hmm. all of the answers, the pat answers that are given to them right. don't gel S- start to with their reality. True. Yeah. yeah. You suddenly, because and, you, and you're the, thrown into a position where you start, where you're actually allow allow yourself to question, like you're pushed out of your comfort zone. Yeah, that's true. And that's when you question things. Yeah, exactly. Um, so maybe it's um, not getting the answers you've been praying yeah, for. Right, right. But uh, maybe but, uh, there's nobody there. I must caution our listeners: don't try to push this process. <laughs> it has not been refined yet. It's it you're not going to have good results if you try to it, like if somebody's like, "Oh, you know, my you, my my I just wonder if there's anybody even listening." And then somebody That's not your lead in. Right, exactly. That's not the time to jump in and be like, "Ha ha, you're right. There's not." The universe is empty person... and cold. <laughs> it's not what they're expressing at that moment, right. most likely. Just just love them 
comfort them, hold yeah. them. And then when they come to you and say, well, how do you, de- how do you deal with it? Mm-hmm. That's a good time to say, well, you're right. It's just hard. Yeah. I've come to peace with the, with the knowledge, you know, with my belief that there is no afterlife and it actually makes me feel better in this way and that way. But that may not be for you. Like the right. last thing you want to do is try and exploit anybody no. ever or and why people try to talk other people into their own way of thinking is, is it yeah yeah but it, is it exploitation to try to get somebody to see reason as to the existence of god or not i think what i think like what, because it, like if you're no. if you're a religious type and you're trying to get them into your fold that feels a little exploitative here's what's exploitative you're exploiting if if you're trying to talk them into seeing reason by utilizing their hard times mm. you're exploiting their 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 emotional state yeah and that's not what we want we want them to come to it in a point from a place of reason with their brains right so yeah. so you don't want to exploit their emotional troubles you want to exploit their brains so that yeah it's to me when they're having a hard time is the is the exact opposite moment of when when you need to mm-hmm. do that just just be there for people who have lost right and maybe you know maybe they'll see Maybe emotionally they'll say, "Oh, you're a good person," and that's what will be the the invitation for them to come and and talk to you about it yeah. when they're ready, right? Or maybe not. Not likely. Anyway, Carl Wimmer, if you're listening, <laughs> you can come and talk to us. We're here for you when you need us. Yeah, let us know. We may not be provide the same kind of comfort. No, that you're that you might want. No, but we'll uh, we'll we'll cheer you on in your powerlifting. Go yeah, you, we didn't Carl. mention that. He's a power lifter. Like I think a we world did say class it. power lifter. Yeah. He's and he's a big fella. Yeah. Not not a handsome gentleman. No. No. By no stretch of the imagination. He, he kind of looks like the uh I don't know, like 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 the the n- not uh, never mind. Stay puff marshmallow. <laughs> Oh my god! I had to I had to abort my mission. I what I was going to say was so wrong. It was even I, worse than that. Yeah. Oh my. But damn. But it was kind of true. I'm, I'm going to have to hear that one offline. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, if you want to, if you want to write into us and tell us how uh, how wrong we are, <laughs> which clearly this episode we may have been wrong. On we, I think we I think we got some stuff wrong. <laughs> Please let us know by writing to us at podcast at thankgodimatheist.com. Or uh, you can leave us a voicemail at 424-666-8442. Or just like us on Facebook and yeah. uh, see what everybody else is having to say. Absolutely. Um, and as always, we like to thank the Red Rock Hot Club for their generous use or general allowance. <laughs> for, for the music. For the music. That's all we need that to they thank let us for. use. Yeah. Uh, generally in, ge- <laughs> in general <laughs> oh my god let's abort this mission while we still have our some of our dignity intact thanks for listening everybody bye